Hey everybody and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. Well, today we're going to finish up our scratch built stock car chassis. Let's have some fun. Stick around. Okay guys, so what I decided to do on this chassis is the same thing I did on our modern and that is to go ahead and do the full round spring buckets. Um, like we see on this one and it's more old school but so am I so <laughs> uh, the first thing we're going to need is, is a piece of uh, 20 thousandths sheet just regular sheet plastic and remember your hole puncher we did this uh, in, in uh, part two um, punch out your um, spring buckets as you see we've got some made up here uh, and I always make a couple of extras. Then you'll take these, line them up in the center on one of your crosshairs on your mat here somewhere. Line that up uh, nice and centered and then get your, uh, and like I told you before, I use a 74 drill bit and just uh, drill out the center and then I can uh, ream that out to whatever size I really need it to be. Um, Next is going to be the actual bucket itself. I've already cut a couple of pieces. This is quarter inch aluminum tubing, but you can use um, quarter inch plastic. So either one. I like using the aluminum. I don't necessarily know why. Uh, you the K and S makes a small cutter, a tubing cutter that works great on both plastic and. Uh, the aluminum and all you do is, of course, just like any other tubing cutter, get your uh, size and then just come down and uh, just turn and uh, and it'll cut it and of course I've already got those cut there um, as soon as you get that done I usually take a piece of 320 and I've got an extra one here and I want these usually to be the same width so I've got my dial caliper out here but I'll just take and smooth out where the cut was on the sandpaper on both sides and then I measure each one to make sure they're the same size now the um, I think it's 60 thousandths on the rear and on the front you know, that one needs to come down some more um, but that would be for the front anyway but you get the idea and you can do that again with the sheet plastic or excuse me the the uh, plastic tubing as well so either way works just fine the next thing you're gonna need is the uh, actual jack screw bolts themselves. Now I use the Walther's brand, but I have used the brand called Hobbits. Uh, they make the exact same thing in, in brass as well. They're 080 uh, machine screws and brass nuts. Um, the uh, What we'll end up doing here is on the rear spring buckets, we'll take one of the uh, brass rods and this is threaded of course so it will screw in and we'll be actually doing that so you've got functional jack screws which i don't know why you need them but um i'm gonna need to ream this hole out just a little bit bigger so that this bolt will come through here and then we'll mount our uh, spring bucket lip on there and by the way on the front what we're going to be doing is I've already gone ahead and put them on the front up here um, but you see how from the side that spring bucket's gonna just mount right up there and now you see it's a little further out and we'll have to cut that down and shape it which is no big deal we'll show you how to do that too um, so I'm gonna go ahead and ream uh, some of these out so I can get the bolts in them get the uh, the lower bucket lip glued on there and I'm going to go also going to take our uh, oops our 080 nuts and mount them back here where they need to be where the uh, the jack screws function up and down through those and I've got a hole or so to drill here too but no big deal I'll go ahead and get that done and we'll be right back our basic chassis is finished, all the construction is done, and now we need to do is prime it. Let's go over a few things real quick. What we just did was, well, first of all, here's the uh, rear spring buckets. They are ready for some primer. We've got our aluminum base 
and the plastic caps there. So we'll get some primer and paint on those. We're going to be using all clad on that, uh, uh, metal finishes on that as well. I went ahead and you see the brass um, bolts here, or the nuts, for the uh, jack screws. We've got our holes drilled in the bottom down here for that. Um, you see the spring buckets in the front and the A-arm hangers behind them. And as you can see, I went ahead and, and uh, added the uh, sway bar up front. And I got a little carried away back here, but this is just a basic chassis. I uh, went ahead and did the oil tank mount, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see that very clearly. Let me grab my pointer here. Um, I don't know if it's going to show up very clearly or not, but right here. And then it's got its uh, brace. Uh, the brace there for it. And, we, and I went ahead and also added the track bar mount. To the rear here too and it's got his support brace back here as well and our basic chassis is like i said just wrapped up and setting it beside our um, template basically that we use just the the monogram 124th chassis you see everything lines up and if we set it on top of it if you remove this sheet metal, as you can see, everything is pretty much right in line with each other. Um, and of course it should be, that was our template. And we're not gonna be doing a roll cage because this is just a basic chassis that's just gonna be on jack stands or a shop cart. But I've got my um, fab shop, uh, which is in raw metal, uh, which you can see the wells there. This is, uh, well, this is a car I'm going to be sharing with you here very soon, too. But let's just put the roll cage on here. And there it goes. Let's see. When that's through the firewall, that'll mount right there. And as you can see, looking pretty good. I was sliding around on it. It's an adjustable roll cage. <laughs> um, but as you can see, it lines right up uh by the way these aren't that hard to make either but that's that's for another time <laughs> um uh first time i've built one of these in quite a while but uh i've had fun with it i really have we're gonna go ahead and get some primer on it now and we'll get our all clad on it i'll get a shot of it with the primer on it before we go any further and uh then i'll show you how i do the welds hold on our chassis is primed and fully cured, and as you can see, we got a good coverage all over the chassis. Looks really good. Um, and let's talk about primers for a minute. Now, for this one, I used Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer. Now, Tamiya makes just a regular surface primer, and you can use your favorite. That doesn't matter. I like the, the Fine Surface Primer because it's, it leaves a good, smooth finish. Uh, doesn't cover up a lot of details. And remember, we rescribed our, our lines in here. They're going to be our angles for where our welds are going to go. And even with that, I always have... Uh, you know how a, a uh, primer or a flat finish will usually have a little bit of a texture? Well, I don't know if texture is the right word, but it'll have a, a rough finish. And when I was younger, I used to do flat black interiors, just testers flat black, and I would take a Q-tip or a soft cloth and I would burnish it or buff it, and it would give it a little bit of a little bit of a sheen that gave it kind of a sort of vinyl-y, leathery kind of smoother look anyway but it still had a that flat tone to it um but because we're going to put a metal finish we want it to be nice and smooth so what i do with any primer like that when i'm going to put a metal finish on it is i go back over it and i just burnish down into the primer and i've already done this chassis uh and it's nice and smooth and and get into everything so it, you've got to even color on it and you don't have to worry about but you, you get the idea just go over it and kind of burnish everything down and get it nice and smooth to the feel that way just like with a gloss finish 
you want that uh, that metal color to go down. The other thing is, remember our truck arm braces here? See the eyelets, the holes where the bolts go through? Same thing with our track bar back here. Uh, I'm hoping you can see that, the holes in the track bar. Sometimes the primer will fill those in, so you got to be careful. And then there's our brace on the side and I don't know if you can see the the three different size holes that go up on the brace and then we've got a brace like that back here on the uh, oil tank and the oil tank uh, straps back here or the the holes in that too so if you get that have you just keep you handy I've got one of these little old uh, uh, stick pin type uh, straight pins and if you do have something like that, all you got to do is just nice and easy, just kind of push through a little bit, and boom, there you go. Good thing with a surface primer, when you put it on just in sparing coats, you usually don't have that issue. But just in case, I always have one handy uh, because I have done it many times, many times. Well, that's out of the way, so now we're going to pick our metal color. Now, typically, you would think it would be easy just grab some steel and just spray it. And in this case, um, I always like the gunmetal color that uh, the buffing metalizer that testers make. But, of course, that's, that's going. And so this is all clad steel. Now, for my taste, it's a little dark. And you see the split in the spoon. And what that is is the... One side is gray primer, one side is white primer, and with some of these colors it's hard to tell the difference, but you can see sometimes just a subtle difference. But like I said, for my taste, the all-clad steel is a little bit too dark, so I like to use magnesium. It's the next step down, but this is the all-clad magnesium over the gray and over the white primer. And again, there's a subtle difference, and on our fab shop car that I showed you the roll cage and some of the chassis you've seen um, it gives it a good steel or metal finish and hope, hopefully you can see that but uh, I think it looks really good and, and very it, it serves the purpose of what we're doing and again that is all clad magnesium which is uh, ALC 111 and really good now you can see there that's that's the color we used on our fab shop car and so this is what we're going to be using this time as well as the uh, magnesium and i'm going to go ahead and get this over to the paint booth we'll get it um, the it and the spring buckets done and we'll be right back Our metal finishes are dry. As you can see, here's our rear spring buckets. Hope they're in focus. Uh, they turned out really well, and we'll be adding the uh, jack screw, the threaded rod to that. They are a little bit long for the front and the back, so we'll take our uh, Dremel cutting wheel, and we'll cut those down and get all of that ready. And the chassis itself, I think, turned out absolutely awesome. And as soon as it dried, I put it in the dehydrator for about an hour. And my, the dehydrator I use for this runs about 128. So 
about an hour, but all clamp dries really quick anyway. But I have a uh, silk cloth and I have my Q-tips and what I usually do is kind of give it a little bit of a, as you can see, a little bit of a metal looking sheen to it. And um, it's really ready for our uh, color. And how we're gonna do that is, if you remember our uh, Fab Shop car, hope I can get this in the light right, um, you see the welds here, you've got some what looks like heat stains then you've got a little bit of dark, and then you've got the silver weld beads that run through there. And the same goes, I'm hoping this is going to focus, the same goes up front right here. We've got our little heat stain marks, a little bit of black, and then you see the, the silver, the welds um, throughout. And this is the effect we're going for all over here. And you'll notice it looks like there's about three different shades of metal on this one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this. This this is uh, bare metal foil polished aluminum in this section up here because this is an aluminum area on the real car. Um, so I, I don't know what we're going to do on that up here yet, but I, I'm thinking right now let's just work on these welds on it. And I've taken a basic stock car chassis, which is what this is, just the basic chassis, uh, no frills. Um, and just as though it just came off the jig and is ready to, for the roll bars and some of the sheet metal to be applied. Um, now, as far as the colors go, you'll notice I have three different brushes and we have three different paints we're gonna use to make our welds. And the first one is, I'm gonna use, um, and this is a small, kind of small brush, but I'm gonna dry brush it. And this is all clad transparent yellow, uh, ALC 42 and the great thing about dry brushing is you can put on just as little as you want to get the effect. And so that's going to be our first color. And then we're going to go back with all clad transparent smoke. Hoping you can see that. It's transparent smoke ALC 405. And then I'm going to use a triple zero brush and put just a light line right in the middle. And then lastly, we're going to use, as you can see, hopefully with, by this brush, and I don't know if my hand's doing us a favor or not there, but it doesn't look like there's hardly but three hairs on this thing. And then we're going to use plain old testers silver. We're going to shake everything up really good, and then that will be our actual weld line that just runs right down the center of it, and that'll give us this effect. So I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and knock out most of it, but I'll reserve three or four of them so you can actually see the process um, of applying the welds, uh, and then we'll be finished. So stick around. Okay, everybody, here is our basic stock car chassis complete. You notice the jack screw bolts and buckets are all in place. All of our welds are in line. Here's a close up of the uh, front clip with the welds and the jack screws. Here's another view. And 
here's a look at the rear and I think this turned out really well you can see the uh, track bar mount and the jack screw buckets down and the welds uh, so this looks like it just came right off of the jig and is ready for the floor pans and and maybe even some of the roll bar supports to come along uh, I think overall it turned out really really well uh, this one, of course, is based on the Laughlin chassis, and everything measurement-wise, as we looked in part one and two, came out just the way they were supposed to come out. And, you know, the fun part of doing these things is the research. We could have done Banjo Matthews, Dylan. There's all kinds, and there's all kinds of research information online, and that's one of my favorite parts. I love research. Uh, for example, here's a look at uh, one of the NASCAR official roll cages and chassis, as you see there. There are just an abundance of uh, pictures and, and stuff online. Uh, here's another modern one, front, rear, center clip, roll cage, all of it. Uh, one in the fab shop. Just, again, an abundance of information that's out there. Um, all you got to do is look. And one of my favorites is uh, William with, I think it's uh, Race Tech that did this, uh, this book. It's on the Tauruses, but as you can see, this is all fab shop stuff. Uh, here's a picture of a jig. This next picture is uh, a jig, a couple of jigs, and you see the, the basic chassis sitting on those. Um, Here's some from the fabrication shop. We talked about the three-strap type. There you go. Uh, some of the wells and intricacies of the front spring bucket there. Um, the weld marks and the, the gussets in the corners of the roll bars. And just an abundance of fab shop information, body information. And in an upcoming video, I'll show you a few other things. I have enjoyed this build immensely, and I've already got plans for this chassis. Uh, I think I know right where I want to put it. <laughs> um, but it'll also be support for some other things that I've got coming up for you guys as well. Listen, thank you so much for, for going along this journey on building this chassis with us. And um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you really want to help us out, again, give us a subscription. Leave a comment. I, I try to read and, and answer every one of them that comes in. Uh, thanks again for tagging along with this, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.